coding across the curriculum. Look at these. Which do you think is best? When you've had a think about it, unpause the video. That's right, the yam is best. Beef uses lots and lots of resources for very little input and wheat uses a lot less than dear old sweet potatoes. That is one way that you can save the world by planting the right crops in the right places. So why is computational thinking important? Well, it's because computer scientists want to find the best solution that solves a problem correctly in the fastest way and using the least amount of resources. Now, most computing problems, the fastest way is the least resources, but there are exceptions and there are other reasons why you might want to do it in a slightly different way. But apart from solving world hunger, there are many, many other problems you could solve by thinking in a computational way. So what will you be learning in today's screencast? Well, you'll be learning about opportunity use coding across the curriculum, computational thinking concepts, higher order thinking and problem solving in your subject, evaluate coding tasks for creativity and problem solving, and experience some coding for yourself. I've got lots of resources that will help you to get started. So coding across the curriculum, what are some of the things that you'll be able to do? Well, we'll start with animation, simulating physics, storytelling, games, quizzes, control technology, actually controlling robots and anything else that you can think of, temperature sensors, anything that you can dream up and use, you can control these days. Equations, many ways to teach equations and all sorts of mathematics and even mathematical art, fractals, lots of really interesting symmetric patterns. Here's a, a bigger look at the various things that are available. As you can see, there's a huge amount of subjects where computer science can really help and that computational thinking can help and coding can help. So let's have a look at the actual underlying concepts. What qualities does computational thinking develop? Creating, tinkering, debugging, persevering, collaborating, and also, let's be honest, in the 21st century, 50% of all jobs are at risk of being computerized in the next 20 years. And there's a high risk a lot of jobs are going to be computerized. So if you can't beat them, join them. I remember once upon a time when my daughter was very young indeed. They had this little competition to give Barbie a career. Hmm. Let's be honest. Some of these careers were not the kind of things I would choose for my daughter. You know, something with actual skills that requires thinking and proper skills. So you know what we did. Hey, we're computer scientists. We got her to be computer engineer. That was the popular vote choice in 2010. And I'm not going to say how that voting happened. I'm sure it was a fair election with no interference from the Russians. What skills do you use? Computational thinking brings together skills that can be used to solve a wide range of problems with or without a computer. You've got logic, algorithms, decomposition, patterns, abstraction, evaluation. Let's have a look at some examples for each one of these so you can see some real life problems and how they can be solved. Start with some logic. Logical reasoning is the process of applying rules to problem solving. You know, just about everything in mathematics is a logic problem, but there are many other logic problems, Rubik's cubes, whatever you can think of. Sometimes it's the most obscure, but it's also the one that can solve many real world problems if you apply the right set of rules. Like one plus one clearly equals 10. Well, it does if you're doing binary. And of course, nine plus one definitely equals A. Well, it does if you're using hexadecimal anyway. Algorithms. Develop the step-by-step -step instructions for solving this and similar problems. You see this? This has been responsible for ruining millions of people's algorithms, caused huge amounts of frustration. It is, of course, the chef's nightmare, the fan-assisted oven. And 
Because of it, all the recipes, all the algorithms needed to be changed. And algorithms are just a simple set of instructions. Cooking recipe being an excellent example of one. Patterns. Observing patterns, trends, regularities in data. You look at that. Beautiful picture I took in the Thailand National Park in Khao Yai. Well worth a visit if you want to go. But what's to be recognized in this pattern? Oh yeah, the bird. Identifying the general principles that generate these patterns. Abstraction, the idea, how does that tree grow? How do things happen? Beautiful for biology and many other subjects. Decomposition, breaking down data processes or problems into smaller, manageable chunks. In this case, fixing your bicycle. Where's the problem? With the bike. No, not just the bike. It's with the wheel. Not just the wheel. It's in the tire. Inside the tire, in the tube. You get the picture. When you need to replace a puncture, you break the problem down. Evaluation. Decide how well did this work? Could it be better? What can be done? All important skills. Higher order thinking skills. So, you know, one of the key things is that if you want to do something that doesn't require higher order thinking skills, to be honest, you will be replaced by a computer. Probably very cheaply. Where does it fall? Okay, so there's a little exercise here which you might want to do uh, and just go to that. It's a nice little Google drawing. It'll make a copy for you. You do need to be on a Mac or Windows PC or Chromebook to do this. Okay, so um, have a go and then come back to the presentation when you're finished. Evaluate coding tasks for creativity and problem solving. So my favorite mechanism is flow. This idea, and it's used throughout computer games, it's the thing. Something that's too hard or confusing is frustrating. Something that's far too easy is boring. So the game mechanic Zen basically tries to get students in the middle. So you don't make it too hard, you don't make it too easy, and the difficulty can increase as time carries on. And as I say, it's an amazing model, and it really helps when you're teaching computational thinking or maths. So have a look at these tasks and decide what high level thinking is going on and where do they fall on this flow scale. So keen to get on with some coding. There's many coding challenges we've got for you. Perhaps you want to make a game in scratch. Perhaps you want to choose your own adventure using a HTML variant with Twine. or Perhaps you want to say on something a little bit more challenging. Do some Python challenges. Lots of fun for all the family. Or if you really want to take it on, and all of that sounds far, far too easy, you're already a fairly good programmer, have a go at Unity. Okay, you'll find these links on coding across the curriculum. Have fun, enjoy, and uh, please let me know how you get on on Twitter. You know where I am, at ESLWeb or just type James Abella Twitter into Google. Thank you very much.